And let's make confession of faith. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. Amen. The title of today's message is Confession of the Sheep. And just so happens among the animals, sheep is the most helpless of the animals. Sheep does not have any physical ability to protect itself from the prey. When they come to attack, sheep don't do anything. They just simply run. <laughs> Without a protector, sheep will be lost. Sheep will be lost. What kind of confession, if you were able to speak, would it make? Only it would say, man. <laughs> it would only say, help. <laughs> That's the only thing it's going to say. If it did not have a shepherd. Amen? Uh, we have a good shepherd. Amen? amen? We have a powerful shepherd. Amen? amen. Uh, David was a weak sheep. That's who he was. But yet when he knew who his shepherd was, he was able to make a confession like this. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Amen? Today, we need to make a true confession of faith. Because we live in a world where we are like sheep to the slaughter. Right? We live in a world where we are so weak. The world seems so big. My problems seem so big. The issues that I have that I cannot resolve on my own strength. But the confession you make will change your life. We need to, one thing it says today, we need to understand the spiritual truth, guys, spiritual truth. Spiritual truth says, God is the Almighty God. He's the God of creation. He created us when we are separated from God because of our original sin. He sent Jesus Christ to save us. Amen? Amen. Those who believe and accept Jesus Christ, God says, I have given you the right to be called children of God. Amen? The truth says you are the child children of God. Amen? Amen? God is with you. God will guide you. God will work in your life. That is the spiritual truth. Who there stands in the way of God's guidance? Who there can block you from living your life for the sake of God? Nothing can. Nothing can stop you. Nothing can be in your way because we are children of God. Open your eyes to see the spiritual truth. Amen? Amen? You know, athletes believe in their ability, do they not? You know, uh, you know, I was in high school wrestling team. I was, right? I was, I was the captain of my wrestling team. I was very good. But every single time, right before the match, what do I feel like? I feel like this. My heart's like, doo -doo 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 -doo. I'm so like nervous. Have I done enough? Right? I know I sweat a lot. I know I practiced. But what if this guy practiced more than me? <laughs> Right? So I'm always back and forth, kind of this unbelief comes in my heart. And then I say, no, I've done enough. I can win. And before the match, it's that fight, mental fight, constantly. Right? Oh, I can win. No, I can't. <laughs> I can do this. Oh, but he's, he seems good. He beat me last time. You know, all these thoughts going back and forth. What's the standard of my confession was me. And same thing for all of the athletes. But you... What's the center of your confession? Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? If your confession rested upon you, that's a weak, very fragile confession. None of us have not done enough. Okay? We are not perfect beings. You do not have perfect background. You do not live in a perfect world. We live in a broken world. Broken through sin. We live in a world dominated by forces of darkness. But yet, if our confession is based upon the covenant of Jesus Christ, I'm telling you, we will come out victorious every single time. Amen? Amen. I mean, think about this. God versus Satan. Who wins? Don't know? <laughs> Should we do a simulation? I mean, God versus Satan. Who wins? God. Amen. Every single time. Is it like a like in sometime and if, maybe, if God's really strong, you know, if God had a nice rest, you know, is that the only time he can win? No. Every single time, who wins? God wins. You guys are children of? Amen. That's the spiritual truth, guys. Amen? Make the confession, the biblical correct confession of faith. As we say, Jesus is the Christ, answer to all my problems. What kind of confession do you make in your life, guys? My life sucks. Oh, I'm nothing. Oh, don't make these confessions. Jesus died upon the tree to wipe, your, wipe out your sin once and for all. What did it say? Tetelestai. It is 
almost done? <laughs> no, you know, it is finished. Finished. Period. Finished. Nothing you have to do. Yet to those who believe and accept Jesus Christ, I have given you the right to be called children of God. John 1.12 That right has been given to every single one of us, those who have believed and accepted Jesus Christ, into our hearts. The confession you make from the Bible, the 66 books of the Bible, equals this confession. Jesus is the Christ, the answer to all my problems. Amen? Amen. Must be my confession. You know, when this confession becomes yours, when you apply it into your life and experience it for yourself, then it becomes yours. Right now is the time we hold on to this together. We get ready. We're like practice time, right? We're, we're doing this. Hey, let's do this. Real time comes when you walk out this door. When you walk out this door, when you're back into your reality, when problems are in your face, what confession are you going to make? Jesus is the Christ answer to all my problems. What kind of confession are you going to make? I am a temple of God. Amen? Holy Spirit resides in your Holy Spirit, you know that? The moment you accepted Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, your door is open. <laughs> okay, excuse me. <laughs> Enters in. Do you believe and accept this right? Door is closed. You know that you have imprisoned, just to be your expression, you have imprisoned the Holy Spirit in your heart forever. You know that? Amen? Do you think, it's like, oh, I don't like, this room's messy. Oh, man, I'm, I'm out of here. He doesn't do that. You know, the slogan in the Marine Corps, what is it? Once a Marine, always a Marine. I was a Marine, so. <laughs> what am I saying, guys? Once a child of God, where did they get that slogan? From the Bible. Once a child of God, always, eternally a child of God. God enters into your heart and doesn't say, I don't like the smell of this heart. <laughs> I don't, it's messy. I don't like your past life. I don't like it. I don't like what you're thinking right now. And I'm going to leave. Never will he ever, ever do that. God, the Holy Spirit, you are stuck with God for eternity. Amen? That's the strength you got to understand. That's the power, confession you guys got to make. No situation upon the history of this universe can separate you from the love of Jesus Christ. Amen? I am a temple of God. Therefore, you are the spiritual platform in which God's kingdom will come upon this world. Amen? Amen? If God needs to save people through the gospel of Jesus Christ, who will he use? You guys, the disciple of Jesus Christ. You are the platform. If you want to go catch a train, where do you go? You go to the train station. You want to go catch a plane, where do you go? You go to the airport. You want to have a nice meal? You come to my house. <laughs> platform guys okay you want to hear the gospel you want to hear the blessing of the kingdom of god you people will have to come to you amen you are the spiritual platform have confidence you're the spiritual spiritual platform god ordained you to be that why because you're the temple of god because you know making the confession that jesus is the christ you have the answer people out here in this world needs this answer God wants to send these non-believers, send these people who are struggling without an answer. Where is he going to send? To you guys. Amen? Amen. To YEM ministry. Amen? Amen? Let us prepare ourselves. Because why? Because you can have this confession. You are the spiritual doctors. Spiritual doctors. Say it with me, guys. I am a spiritual doctor. I am a spiritual doctor. What did I say? Spiritual healing. Healing of the heart, healing of the mind, healing of the lifestyle, healing of the physical body. All working together in oneness. Takes place when salvation takes place. Amen? Amen. Just because you have a physical illness doesn't mean it's just physical illness. It's all connected. It's all connected. Okay? So we go to the source. Spiritual issue. Healing of my heart. The scars that I have. Reinterpreted with the gospel. The lifestyle you live influences the physical body. Change your lifestyle. Change the way you think. Right? All these things working together to bring about true healing in your body. Amen? As we all know, our brother Don is fighting cancer right now. We're, we're praying for you in spirit, in, in prayer. Right? And I'm, this is a message he needs to hold on to. As we hold on to this message, God will bring about true healing upon his life. Amen? Amen? Let us continue to make the confession of faith. You are the ambassador of Christ. 
Amen? Ambassador of Christ. Do we just send anybody out as an ambassador? Have you met an ambassador from a foreign country? Have you? I have met a couple. Uh, I even went to their, their office, offices. <laughs> I was invited there. Right? Now, when you go to an embassy, they check you in. They give you a little tag. Right? They say, wait here. Your time's come. They bring you up into a, a nice office. You sit down. The secretaries bring you teas and, and fruits and whatever things in front of you. And when, when everything's ready, here comes the ambassador, right, with, with his entourage. He doesn't walk alone. He's got a few couple people with him. So, I'm the ambassador. <laughs> He's got to show off a little bit. Right? He sits down like this. Mm, okay. And he sits down, and we begin to talk. The point I'm making, ambassadors are not alone. You are the ambassador of Christ. Amen? God brings about the heavenly angels of chariots and fire upon wherever you go. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Do you believe in the Bible? Amen? Amen? God sent angels ahead of all the people of God doing important covenantal work. Every single time. Every single time. I believe it. Do you believe it? God will work in our life. Confession of faith, guys. Confession of faith. What do you say? With your mouth that God gave you. What is it? What do you think with the brain that God gave you? What's in this heart that needs in your heart must be the treasure of the gospel, guys. I'm telling you. Change the confession of your faith. God will change your life. Amen? Today, we're talking about the confession of the sheep. What kind of confession then do sheep, we are the sheep, do we need to make? Number one. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Every single day, this is the confession you make, guys. The Lord is my shepherd. I don't need anything else. If God is the one guiding me, working in my life, I don't have to worry. Amen? Amen. If you are your own shepherd, oh man, oh boy, you got lots and lots of things to worry about, okay? If you're background is your shepherd if your motive is your shepherd if your friend is your shepherd if this world is your shepherd you have things to worry about i'm telling you but the lord is my shepherd ultimately saying what know your identity know your identity verse one the lord is my shepherd i shall not want david is making this confession knowing his identity knowing his identity What's the role of a shepherd, guys? What is your role of a shepherd? Like I said, sheep are the most helpless of the animals. They don't have any fighting abilities. They don't, right? They just go, help. That's all they can say. <laughs> they can all they do. I saw a documentary where, how, how, you know how sheep, you know, they have to, you have to, what do you call the the, the yeah, shed their, their skin thingy. I forget what it's called. Anyways, once in a while, you got to do this. And they just like this, not even moving. It's like, why? Is it alive? <laughs> Do you know how dumb these animals are? That they would eat themselves to death. Do you know this? The sh- one of the shepherd's job is to make sure they don't eat themselves to death. Like, hey, stop eating. Stop eating. I mean, I do this sometimes. I eat myself to death. I'm like, oh, <laughs> my son. I have to remind myself, oh, I, I, I got a world to save. I can't die here. You got to be, but that's how dumb sheep are. I've seen a documentary, I told you one time, a, a, a bird landed on his head, and it was eating his eyes. <laughs> and yet the sheep just going, man, <laughs> minding his business. He's losing his eyeballs, <laughs> minding his business. How fragile are the sheep, right, without a shepherd? So the role of a shepherd is to protect the sheep. What did David do? David protected the sheep from the lions and the bears and all kinds of prey that comes along. Who is your shepherd? The almighty God. Amen? Amen. It doesn't matter how weak the shepherd is, the sheep is. It doesn't matter how weak you are. You don't understand my situation, Pastor. You don't know what I'm going through. You don't know all the issues in my life. Well, it doesn't matter because the God that I serve is the almighty God. Amen? Amen? The Christ that we have accepted, he is Jesus Christ, the answer to all of your problems. Amen? Amen? Don't look at yourself and be down. Don't look at your situation and go, oh, my life sucks. Because why? God is your shepherd. That's why. When you truly understand this, the natural confession, as David said, I shall not want. 
This is a confession of someone who has truly experienced the blessing of God. He just experienced it. When David experienced this confession, he's not making this confession in green pasture. You know this? I'm a pastor doing theological studies, doing the background of these kind of things, right? I've done these things. He was running for his life when he's making these things. Hiding in caves. Running away from his life. And yet he's making these patches. Do I walk through the shelly of shadows of death? Okay. Does this sound like a fun place he's going in? <laughs> Valley of death he's walking. And yet he's making this confession, the Lord is my shepherd. I told you, right? Valley usually are the mountains, two sides, and where it narrows down. Usually are the meeting points of between two armies. So imagine, what do you think he's talking about? Goliath, one side. David, the other side. Coming down to the valley. Walking to the death valley. Okay? He knows this. Everybody knows this. David's going to die. <laughs> I mean, look. We're, let's say you were there watching this. Here is Goliath for 40 days. is mocking the God of Israel. Nobody is strong enough to stand. Or they're scared. I will give you half of the kingdom. Nobody's going to want the kingdom after they're dead. It doesn't matter anyways. Nobody's going, not even the king. Here comes the teenage boy. I will go fight him. Okay, go. <laughs> I mean, even that's crazy, right? Why would you let a little teenage boy go, right, to fight for your country? Any case, God allowed this to happen. David walks down the valley picking up five stones. What did Goliath say? What am I, a dog that you brought out a stick to fight me? David didn't even have an armor or sword or anything. Goliath, the giant with the most... Well, most, most expensive weapon, the powerful weapon of the time he has. Looking upon David, he laughed, mocked David. I mean, I'm sure the, both sides of the army was like, oh my God, this is finished. <laughs> this, this is no match. And which is why we see in the, you know, when you fight sports, they say David against Goliath. What are they saying? The Goliath is the team so strong that the David team is so weak, it's going to lose. But wrong, wrong, wrong. David against Goliath, who wins 100% of the time? David wins. Amen? David wins. Why? Because David comes in the name of the Lord. He knows who his shepherd is. He knows the mighty name that he holds on to. Amen? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I don't need anything else if God is with me. I don't fear anything. I don't have to use personal motives. I don't have to depend on the world because you know that Christ is more than enough. Christ is complete. Christ is everything. And that name of Jesus Christ is with us. Amen? Once again, these are the confessions that saves you, revives you. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. This is not just a verse in the Bible. This is a confession of faith from a person who truly experienced it in his life. I pray that every single one of you experience this truth. Amen? Amen. Lord is your shepherd. Second confession. He makes me lie down, lie down in green pastures. Green pastures. Verse 2 to 3, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me into path of righteousness for his name's sake. Amen. Not only do you know your identity, you need to know the blessing that follows your identity. What did he say? He will guide you. I will guide you into green pasture. Meaning what? I will guide you into a place of victory and answer. In Christ, it's all there. I always say, don't try to change anything in your life. Don't. right? You're going to make mistakes. Let God guide you into green pasture. Amen? Amen? You have the best guide. The best. Uh, you know, it really depends on who your guide is that will change your life. Who are you following? What are you following? Or what are you following? Right? Jesus is the Christ. Follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And in that, in that kind of guidance, what do sheep do? What's the role of a sheep? What do sheep do? Nothing! They don't have to do anything. They don't have to do anything. What do sheep do? 
They're eating, and the shepherds go, hey, stop eating. You're going to die. Hey, stop eating. <laughs> okay, let's go here. You need water. <laughs> let's go here. Okay. They go get some water. Oh, here comes the, uh, uh, here comes prey to capture and kill you. Get behind me. I'll protect you. What are ships doing? Nothing. They don't have to do anything. They do simply follow. Amen? Amen. That is all you sheeps have to do. Amen? Amen? Including me. I'm also a sheep. We are, but our shepherd is our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. That's why you don't have to worry. That's the experience you guys need to have. Not just the amen here, but when you walk out the door, when you face your reality, understanding this, enjoying this, and truly saying, wow, amen. That's when it becomes yours. I've experienced this in my life. I don't have any background. I don't have many power and ability. I'm the first Christian in my family. How did I become a pastor you know, in my struggles? Following the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. I pray that you would truly make this confession. He would. He will restore you. God will restore you. Are you tired? Are you weak? God says he will restore your spirit here through the word of God. Amen? Amen. Immerse yourself in the gospel every single day. Not just on Sunday, one hour worship. Every day, just Dive into the word of God, into the covenant. Protect yourself within the word of God from beginning to end. Every single day, God will restore you. For his name's sake, David confesses. Right? Who do you live for? You get to live for the glory of God. There's no more better life than living for the glory of God. Glory of God. And to be honest, not many people have the right to live for the glory of God. They just live for themselves. They just live because of personal responsibility. They just live because they live. But you get to live for the glory of God every single day. Amen? Amen. From the moment when you wake up, from the, all the way you finish out your life, every day and everything you do, living for the glory of God. That's a blessed life. That's a blessed life. I pray all of us live this amazing life. And what is who guarantees this this life, God does. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Who? My shepherd does. You don't have to worry. We just simply follow shepherd into absolute victory. Amen? Third confession you need to make. I will fear no evil. For the Lord, you are with me. Amen. What does that mean? Know your authority of the identity that you have. Verse 4 to 5 reads this, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Why do you not have to worry? Because you are with me. Amen? Though you walk to the valley of shadow of death, don't fear anything. Like I said, spiritual truth, God versus Satan. Who wins? God. Every single time. You know, one thing the Bible has really done for me that I used to enjoy in my life that I can't enjoy anymore. Scary movies. I can't enjoy scary movies. It's just not scary anymore. <laughs> it's not scary anymore. I want to be like, ah, ah. You know, it's not scary anymore. Ah, oh, spiritual truth. All right, no, evil spirit. Okay. God is with me. All right. Ah, demons come. Okay, yeah, I have Jesus Christ. Come on. Yeah, get out of here. Okay. Do you know what I mean, guys? Spiritual truth. Amen? Amen. Know who you are. Why are we fearful? Are you afraid of a little child saying, ah, I'm going to kill you? Are you afraid? That's okay. What did I say last week? Treat problems like a little child. Amen? Because you are children of God. Amen? Yes. Treat like a little child. Because God is with you. With Emmanuel. Oneness. There's nothing that can overcome God. Amen? <laughs> nothing that can overcome God. And that God says, I am with you. I am with you every way you go. I am going to guide you. Emmanuel. God with us. Don't worry. Don't worry. This is the blessing you have. So don't fear your situation. Don't fear the forces of darkness. Right? Spiritual truth. God versus Satan. 
God wins, right? That's what he did. He said, okay, Satan, Lucifer, you want to take my space? Okay, you're out of here. Boom, he kicked him out. That's what he did, God said, boom, get out of here. You don't belong here. You don't, you don't get to live enjoying this blessing. So God created hell. Why? To imprison and make him suffer for how long? For eternity, okay? That's his faith. Satan knows this. That's his faith. You have nothing to worry about in Christ. Amen? Amen? What kind of blessing do you have? God will give you an answer of only Christ. God will give you an answer that is unique to anything else. Nobody can even copy what you do because of the answer in Christ that you have. God will give you a power to recreate everything. Satan throws you a situation for you to cry over. God changes it for you to be thankful over. Amen? Amen. That's the power of the gospel. Think about this. Most people walking the valley of shadow of death will be in fear, tremble. What did David turn it into? A confession of faith that we still read over and are received blessing by. Amen? Amen. What are you worried about? What are you worried about? Okay? I don't know what you guys are worried about, but in Christ, God will change the crisis into an object of thanksgiving. Amen? Amen. That's what you get to look for. Don't worry. What did, what did it say in the verse 5? You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Enemies want to kill you, but God raises you up as a victor. Amen? People want to bring you down, but God raises you as a true leader. Amen? You got nothing to worry about, guys. Number third, third impression, right? All these things that we say, the confession that we, we make must become your imprint, root, and nature. Do you think David's confession that we read over right now in Psalm 23, you think this was confession out of fear? I don't think so. This is a confession of man in confidence, filled with confidence. It's a confession of somebody who truly, truly believes what he is saying, imprinted with the gospel, rooted with the gospel, natured with the gospel. Amen? We all have all this other garbage that's imprinted deep in our hearts, rooted deep into your soul, and part of now become a nature that just comes out like second nature. We need to change that with Jesus Christ, with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Change all of your scars to Christ. Change all of your worries to the kingdom of God. Change all of the negativity for the living your life for the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. This is the life that we live. Three confessions we talked about today. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. And what is it? I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Three confessions. Every single day, every single moment. The confessions of the sheep. Knowing I am weak, we hold on to, we look to our shepherd. Amen? Not anything else in this world. We look to our mighty shepherd, Jesus Christ. In conclusion, there was a, a missionary by the name William Whiten Borden. In, by the time he graduated high school, he received a fortune from his family. And I mean fortune, millions upon millions. He didn't have to do anything for the rest of his life. But as he uh, graduated from seminary, he had the heart, I want to become a missionary. So he goes to, as a missionary, Everybody wanted to stop him. And this man in his missionary, he dies early in his age because of a, a, a disease. Uh, but this is the three confession that he makes. He says this, no reserve, he says, no reserve. I'm going to give everything I have to God. And he did. He gave all of his own, the riches and the money that he had, he gave it up for, for missions, for Muslim missions, he gave it up. He said, no retreat, never give up. Even in hardship, harsh conditions, he says, I'm never going to give up because of the mission God has given me. And he says, what? No regret. No regret. No matter what happens. Like I said, this man died early uh, in, his, in his 20s, early 20s. He died. And the, this is a confession he makes. No regret. I'm telling you guys, the confessions you make shape your spiritual state. Amen. If that's really who you are, you're going to turn out this way in your life. You always live in confession of sadness. Guess what? Your life is going to end up sadness. 
You're always in worry. Oh, what if this? I'm telling you, your life is going to end up in, in the same way you worry. But you make the confession of faith in the gospel, we will be victorious in Jesus Christ. Amen? Three confessions. Confession of the sheep. I pray that every day in your life, you make the confession that will save yourself and the people around your life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the message. May you bless our brothers and sisters gathered here to truly make the confession of the sheep. To know that we have everything in Christ. To know that in Christ we have nothing to worry about. To know that we have absolute victory in Christ, Father. Thank you for the identity and authority that you have given to us. Help us to truly live it out for your glory so that we can save many who are lost in the field. We thank you and praise you. We pray all these things in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.